he said, are you proud of me? And I was looking at that and I said, well, no. Do something right. Go to school and start learning. Me and my friends used to kick it on my, on my porch and kind of hang out. Before we were writing graffiti, and just kind of hang out and, you know, talk about Nintendo because we couldn't afford it, you know. And uh, she would be like, hey, go to the park. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go to the park. Yeah, Cause because the park is gang infested, you know. Go to the park. We would go to the park, and get jumped. I used to have Prisma colors, so I would put alcohol inside the Prisma colors so it could just be a little bit more paint. And I was in my dad's restroom filling it up. He comes in thinking I'm sniffing it. You're sniffing paint and all this. I'm like, <laughs> he fucked me up. When I'm painting the graffiti, I feel good, man. I, I, all the stress is gone, all the drama is gone. I'm just, it's me, the wall, the paint. I might get sunburned, some might be 100 degrees, I might be thirsty or hungry, but I don't leave the wall until it's done, you know? I should have added more green, more green stars. Next time. Hopefully tomorrow we could uh, get something bigger cracking. It's gonna say saber, but it's gonna take me a minute to get to that point. Looks a little messy now, but by the end of the day, it's gonna look real nice. S a b e r. You know, I mean, there's a lot of math going on. There's a lot of visual math going on. And people don't realize how much math really goes on to do a piece. It's like with our pieces, we like to break them down to as if they're actually in fighting stance. The R leg is cocked a certain way and has parts coming out that'll get you. Or when I have certain center points to a piece, I'll guard them with little, like, spike connector laser things or whatever you want to call them. I remember even being young before Sabre was super big. Uh, people kind of being attracted to his stuff because he was young and he was doing really technical pieces and he was very productive and uh, you know he hit good spots he wasn't that guy just walking down the street just tagging on everything he was the person that would take the spot and make the most of it Sabre's known for just going all out he's known for doing things that like people talk about doing but nobody ever really has the, the ambition or the drive to, to really try to, to go out and, and produce and accomplish. As far as the West Coast is concerned, he's produced like probably, you know, four or five of the like ten most monumental pieces of works of graffiti. Things like the bridge on the five for GK, you know, that MSK billboard right there by the Capitol Records building in Hollywood. You know, those things are just like colossal. So it took me and Jess about three nights, and uh, it's actually about three stories tall. And the funny thing was, when I finished it, I get a phone call from GK, early as hell. Your S looks like shit. You need to go back up there and fix it. And I was like, ah! So I went back in the day and fixed the S, and then I figured out, finally it's done. <laughs> Everything in my life always revolved around doing graffiti as far as I put that in front of my family, in front of myself. You know, I put my parents through hell for this. There were points that became very low, yes. In fact, it was very disruptive to the family, uh, to my husband and I as, as a couple, but also as a, uh, financially, it was hard on us. Um, we both had jobs that we had to maintain. And it's kind of scary when you pull up from work and you see a, a police car outside your door and you're not sure if it's just because he's in trouble or they're telling you something worse than that. Because I've known his friends have been killed, um, have been shot, stabbed. Um, I've known that he's been beaten up so bad one time that I thought I was going to lose him with his eye. Uh, he wasn't going to have an eye and he had brain damage where he had to go back through training, uh, educational training. And then years later I found it was his own friends that beat him up to jump him into this sort of quasi-gang thing. And I have uh, brain hemorrhaging and uh, short-term memory loss. I was in the hospital for, for two weeks. His Knees are blown out, his shoulders are blown out, and can't be repaired. 
things like that that to me have nothing to do with the art. I couldn't understand how defiant he started to get and uh, it had just gotten to a point where nothing worked. Praise didn't work, threatening didn't work, punishment restrictions. Eventually I told him, I'm going to do this anyway, I'm either going to let me go or I'm going to sneak out of the house, I'm going to steal the car and I'm going to drive into LA and I'm going to go hang off a bridge and I'm going to steal some paint on the way there. And I remember throwing a handful of cash down the stairwell at him and I said pick it up and don't come back. Call me. I always want to know what you're doing, but you can't live here anymore. That, I think, was probably one of the lowest points, because the last thing you ever want to do is throw your child out of your house. Somebody caught a tag inside my E and like went all over my whole shit like oh there's this guy right here, expert. He's got a tag in his doorway. Yeah, I wanted to be clear that, you know, I fucking went over you. You know, like That's what's up. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. This never happens. I'm way smoother than that. Ow. My father wasn't very good at paying bills. He never had a, a job, per se, but, but he would um, somehow bring money in, which a lot of it went to drugs. Like on one of his birthdays, you know, one of the rare happy times of the year and shit, I asked him how old he was, and he just like slaps me mad hard. What the fuck just happened, you know what I mean? I was like, he was like, he, he said something about it being disrespectful, I like, be asking like, yo, know, how old they are. There was very little affection in our house growing up. You know, we were raised by a television. Uh, that's pretty much where we got our sense of family from. Yo, curls, what's up? We got those fours in, those gray fours, gray and black, they're hot. So it was hard, but uh, we just found ways to occupy our time. I was in the bathroom of some hotel room in Jersey with like dishes in the sink. We had just finished eating and my parents were yelling like put downs and shit at me like I wish I knew exactly what it was that they were yelling me about. It was so stupid and frivolous. They were just taking out their frustrations on me and I just wasn't man enough for it. I couldn't take it anymore. It was just like they've been doing it my whole life and I was sitting there and I'm like dude tomorrow I'm not coming back from school. I'm just like out. <sighs> A lot of care and tenderness that goes into handling sneakers. And I was just like, I'm gone. And I didn't come back. I just turned 17, I think. So I didn't finish my senior year of high school. I didn't finish at all. I like skateboard with my friends all day and then like at the end of the night it's like I just fucking go on the train it was all good and just rack everything I needed because it was just sweet like that for me to roll so. He had like a Mountain Smith backpack on the front and a Mountain Smith backpack on the back and a skateboard and like two bags in his hands and just like a gang of paint and a gang of markers and god knows what else I like all my shit you know like, I have my shit my big ass bag Fucking, I was just like my ill pillow, and I'll just like sit, and I'm on point too, you know, I'm not like fucking Daryl sleep. Everyone partying, like a lot of drugs, a lot of drinking, we were just young kids, just trying to have a good time basically. It was so exciting because it was like everything was like so new, I've never done anything before, you know, spend a week in jail, I'd be like, wow, the whole time, like, what's gonna happen next? Like, it's, it's, you know, I had bad fun. <laughs> <laughs> 